it's Jane o'clock na. Hello, mga kachar, mga kachar. So, hmm, long time no vlog. So, magma-vlog lang ako for my YouTube channel. Next to my, for my YouTube channel. Ayan, para makahabol sa kota. Anyway, so, um, welcome to my vlog. If this is your first time, um, visiting my, uh, channel, please do like and share and subscribe and hit that notification bell anyway um so i've been here in new zealand for july august september october november for four months now last november 29th so as you probably have seen in some of my videos i arrived in new zealand last july 29th um on a visit visa so again, um, I'm not saying that I went here on a visit visa and then um, did the job hunting here in New Zealand. But what happened in my case is um, I already got the job offer and uh, I already received the INZ or the Immigration New Zealand um, link wherein I could apply for my working visa. So in short, before I really moved to New Zealand is um, I already had a job offer. Yun lang. I just want to clarify that part. Um, okay, so why did I think of moving to New Zealand? So af uh, uh, to be honest, it's not just my own decision but it's also with the decision of my husband and of course with the help of my sister and um my brother-in-law kuya von and ate ellen so anyway um kailan ba ako start ng application ko so i started my application last june 2022 so may kodigo nga pala ako ng uh share ko for today para wala akong makalimutan so june 2022 2022 yes that was last year i applied for the iqa or the ncqa uh teaching iqa and i've paid 746 new zealand dollars i don't know if there are any um new fees but that's how much i paid for the ncqa teaching iqa and then after that um i received my uh what do you call that i received my teaching certification last june 22 2023 if i'm not mistaken pero after a year dun lang ako that that was the only time that i was able to get my qualification so why did it happen because i did not take pte or the english um english proficiency test because here in new zealand before you are able to teach in new zealand or get a teaching certification you should take an english test so it's not um uh, um what do you call this like prc or professional um teacher test you know but it's just like reciprocity we call it reciprocity in the u.s because i remembered um the yung dep ed or siyempre diba before you could teach in a public school in the philippines you have to be um a licensed professional teacher so as you are a licensed professional teacher here in the philippines um what we did is yung nag reciprocate lang so parang alam mo yun and i don't know if my term is right but anyway so that's what happened there in the u.s and then here we moved we moved in new zealand so another uh teaching qualification is required so i did my pta academic june 7 2023 which i paid 235 us dollars so if you would notice kanina i said 746 new zealand dollars but the pte is 235 us dollars um so everything again uh when i applied june 4 2022 for my nzqa teaching iqa the completed the completed IQA evaluation for my bachelor's and master's degree came out last September 13, 2022. 
So that means it's June, September, June, August, September, June, July, August, September. So in three months and nine days, three months and nine days to be exact. And then um, I paid for the teaching council registration and practicing certificate, which is 564.37 New Zealand dollars. So again, New Zealand dollars, 564.37. And then my uh, approved provisional certi teaching certificate was nakareceive ako. <laughs> okay, ito yung funny part. Since I wasn't able to de do the English proficiency yet, um, I didn't know that I already received from the teaching council na I was already approved for a teaching certificate. I just needed um, the English proficiency. So they emailed me last May 12, 2023. But then, I did not see that. Oh, diba? Na, I, I did not see that. So it was in my spam mail, I guess. Or I did not receive it at all. Or maybe I deleted it. I don't remember. But anyway, um, so... Um, I asked how my teaching certificate was even if I don't have the I didn't have the English proficiency, proficiency yet a diba funny thing I just asked and then they told me that you should have received an email from Kate blah 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 uh, asking for some of the requirements uh, for your te provisional teaching certificate and one of the requirements is the PTE that's when I decided now oh, sige na nga, I'll take a uh, PTE exam or the English any English test in my case what I did is the PTE my husband Gian he did IELTS okay he did IELTS because he has nursing also so para lang ano heating two birds in one stone parang ganun yung peg but anyway <laughs> hindi ko alam kung tama ba but anyway so when I received that email nung um, May 12 which I didn't know um I already took the PTE at Las Vegas. O yun. Tapos after that, I submitted my PTE exam. Siyempre, yun nga. I don't know if you have seen my vlogs before. Pero yun, I got 65 in my writing, I guess. So, yun yung weakness ko in the English proficiency. So, after all those things, what happened is, uh, they asked me for more... Uh, papers or more documents and here are some of the list that i've um accomplished or uh, what do you call this scanned to submit to the teaching council so one is the certified through copy of my fbi so i applied in the uh u.s also because i've been in the u.s for five years so i should have an fbi from out of that country for, uh, from out of the country aside from that syempre meron din akong nbi and then the IQA PDF files. So if you have your IQA already, um, you should download it as it is. So download the file and then make sure that uh, when you download the file, you don't do rename the file. So make sure that the file is itself. Um, on the email that you will receive from the IQA, it will tell you not to rename the file because um, that is like their certified true copy thing. And then also they asked me for my PTE or any English language competency requirement. Na bala ka if you want to get IELTS. TOEFL is also accepted. And then lastly, they asked for the uh, certified through copy of testimonials. So what happened in my case is I used the previous testimonials that were given to me by my uh, principals or um, head teachers way back in the Philippines and then I also presented um, the what do you call that the testimonials from my principal here in the US principals in the US and some supervisors so I think I've got like six testimonials that I've submitted to the teaching council and then I did the certification or the certified through copy of those documents so in the US it's a little bit easier to certify uh, documents 
uh, because they will just they will keep that records for them also. So, alam yun, wala nang cheche boreche. Um, and then, uh, one of the good things or one of the things that I really like uh, when I finally got my teaching certificate is that's when I started applying for jobs. So, in ISCO, I, I did all the, uh, what do you call this? I made sure that my, my curriculum vitae and um, cover letters are or cover letter is good. Pero to be honest, when Ate Ellen checked my cover letter and Sir Rudy, um, what I did, I submitted it to all the schools that I've applied. So, generic yung, I've used a generic cover letter. Generic yung term ko kasi pare-pareho kong pinasa yun sa lahat ng schools. I submitted the same cover letter. So, I'm so bad. Huwag niyo po akong gayahin. Pero, yun. Kasi, I'm, I'm just, let's say, I'm very blessed because um, my my HR, my boss, who is the owner of the center I'm working at right now is, uh, you know, he trusted me. That's all I could say. He really trusted me. So, um, so ayun nga, I applied for different uh, schools from uh, primary to secondary primary, intermediate, and secondary, but I wasn't lucky. And then, um, I don't know, also just go back to some of my blog vlogs. So, as again, I'm a secondary teacher. My major is biological sciences or biology. And what happened is, I was on a discretionary pathway. Discretionary pathway because I've got level 6 for my bachelor's degree and level 9 for my master's degree. So what I had to take is to do this discretionary pathway. So on the discretionary pathway, yun nga, and daming, uh, there's a lot of requirements which you should uh, check my other vlog. So if you're a J1 visa teacher, this is something that you should watch because that's what I did. Um, after my program ended, my family moved to New Zealand. So, yeah. A little bit pricey, yes, I would say very expensive. But, you know, one of the, re one of the good things, so again, the expenses that I've spent, um, the expenses that my family had here in the U.S. In, um, were covered, at least covered, with a 10,000 tumataging thing. <laughs> Gusto ko maglagay ng sound. 10,000 um, relocation grant uh, for teachers. Overseas relocation grant for teachers. So, again, uh, binibigay ni universe ni Lord lahat. So, thank you Lord for all the blessings. Because what happened was, um, we found out, because I love reading sa Facebook some of the uh, things how teachers, Filipino teachers move here in New Zealand. So, I've read in one of it na sabi yung, there's a relocation grant for overseas teachers. So, what I did, I told my sister about it and I asked her to read about it. Kasi lazy ako. Tamad ako magbasa. Tapos si ate, Ellen, she really read about it. And then, uh, on my end naman, parang I just emailed Teacher Supply to um, ask or for the requirements and everything. Just to clarify, could I, could I, uh, what do you call this? Could I get a refund for my NZQA, PTE exam, for the airfare of my family, my airfare, and everything else that we've spent to get here in New Zealand. And you know what? We were really blessed because we, I think, um, our family, as a family of six, we've spent about eighteen thousand New Zealand dollars. Yes, around eighteen thousand New Zealand dollars to move here in New Zealand. But because of the relocation grant, the ten thousand New Zealand relocation grant dollars, parang it saved us. Alam niyo yun? Eh, so, again, um, if you're still watching, so what happened with me, or in my case, what I've done is, I emailed 
I applied for the relocation grant for the overseas relocation grant last September 21. I may code ko pa ako, ba? Last September, okay. I asked them. Oh, so September 21, I applied for the overseas relocation grant. September 22, they replied that they received my application for the grant. And then after that grant, um, October 16, they sent me an email that the outcome was approved. So approved meaning they gave me the 10,000 New Zealand dollars, the teacher relocation grant. Um, and then it will take... Uh, four weeks or six to eight weeks para for, for them to deposit it on my account. So the things that I prepared is um, with the help again of my sister at Ellen is we put all the receipts in one document in one we scanned all the files in one document PDF file so that includes our medical medical here in New Zealand and then medical in the Philippines um, airfare, airfare ko, airfare ng family ko, and then the teaching council or the I IQA, PTE, what else? And then excess baggage, it's also included in, I don't know, what else? But, you know, after that, um, they, one of the things that they really require um, that you should be prepared is to open an account, a New Zealand bank account when you get here and make sure that when you get your first bank statement, you go to the bank and have them stamp the bank statement, your bank statement. So just go, for example, in with me, uh, my bank is ASB. So what I did is when I received my uh, what do you call that? When I received my first bank statement, with or without laman, <laughs> with or without money, just go there, they will stamp it, and then sign it, and then write the date. That's it. And then after that, you will scan that, and then send it to the teacher supply, because they will need that to prove that that is your bank account. And then yun nga, after, for in, with me, after four weeks, I received my grant, when they sent me an email last October 16. So that means November 23rd, I received the 10,000 relocation grant. Again, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. And um, on my next video, I will share with you guys um, my, uh, what do you call this? My, my AEW visa journey. Okay, so it's already nighttime. I'll see you again. I hope you've learned something in my vlog. Again, you can find me at um, Facebook. So it's Jane One, J One the Explorer, or Jane May and Sinaris Dash Cruise on Facebook. So again, I'm not doing this vlog because I am an immigration advisor or anything, but this is all based on my experience. Hope to see you in New Zealand. Bye mga kachar, mga kachar.